Back in about 2000 or 2001, I was driving alone on the way back to Arizona after visiting my mom in Colorado. I was in a station wagon and was carrying a desk my mom had given me that was my grandfather's before. I've always been scared driving at night because I think there's someone in my back seat who's going to get me. This might be because of too many scary movies or it might be because my mom's paranoia rubbed off on me. I was in the army and drove back and forth a lot to visit her and she would always get mad at me for sleeping at rest stops or gas stations and tell me that someone was going to kidnap me and kill me. I just didn't want to be bothered with the hassle and expense of a motel most of the time. But I digress. So I'm driving an empty stretch of highway late at night with no other cars around. This red truck comes up behind me flashing his lights and honking his horn at me. I thought to myself that there was something wrong with my car or maybe there was something wrong with the desk and the hatchback. Why else would he be so insistent on pulling me over? So I pull over and get out of my car, a bad choice I chalk up to me being in my mid-twenties and naive. As I'm getting out of my car, he's directly behind me and still flashing his lights and honking his horn. I planned on going to the back to see what could have been wrong with my car and I got to about the middle of the car when it hit me. Why is he still honking at me? Then he got out of his truck and that's when I knew something wasn't right. I jumped back in my car and sped off. The next exit was 45 miles or more away. He followed me the entire time. I take the first exit and go to a crowded grocery store with a laundromat right next to it. There was an ambulance parked there with its lights flashing so I parked right next to it. I figured if there was an ambulance there eventually would be a police officer too. The man stayed in his truck in the grocery store parking lot watching me the entire time. I was terrified. I didn't want to get out of my car and felt like I'd sound like an idiot if I tried to tell someone what happened. I waited about an hour before he finally left. After he left, I waited a little longer before continuing my drive back to Arizona. I was paranoid and on the lookout for any red trucks the entire time. Fast forward about five or six years. I'm watching Unsolved Mysteries or some similar type of crime show with my husband at the time who already knew the story since we were dating back then. And what story pops up on the show? One about a man on that exact same stretch of highway with a red truck who used those exact same tactics to get a few women to pull over and murdered them. I'm really glad my gut told me something was wrong and to get back in my car and drive. I grew up in a small rural town where nothing ever happens. The type of place where it's not uncommon to leave your doors unlocked and your closest neighbors about a mile from your house. Our family also had this giant old cat named Tag who was a bit of a drama king, but we loved him. One summer when I was around 9 or 10 years old, the cat starts going ballistic. Tag would usually sleep in my room curled up next to me until I fell asleep and then get up to do whatever cat things he did at night. Occasionally, he would meow or try to wake me up on those nights when he could see the bottom of his food bowl and needed a midnight snack. Usually if I ignored him, he would give up or rarely go to try to wake my mom up instead. This night, however, he bangs against my parents' bedroom door until he gets in and is meowing loud enough to wake us up. Our bedroom doors are next to each other, so I caught a tag to come to bed because it's about 2am. He's having none of it and carries on meowing. My mom gets up, goes down to the kitchen, then huffs back up with tag on her heels, still meowing insanely. She said his bull had plenty of food and he just walked her down to the door of the kitchen. Tag was an indoor-outdoor cat, but he had his own cat door through the garage so there was no need for one of us to let him out. My mom said my brother must have left the kitchen door open since just the screen door was shut, but she wasn't going to hold it open forever for the cat to just stand there and not go out. She shut the kitchen door and went back to sleep, firmly shutting her bedroom door this time so Tag couldn't let himself back in. I always keep treats for him in my room and offered him one, but he was still meowing at the door, trying to get them up. I grabbed him and brought him into my room and shut my door to try to get him to sleep. I laid back in bed, trying to go back to sleep, and Tag meowed at my door, wanting to go back out. I finally opened my door and he bolted back downstairs towards the kitchen and that's when I heard what sounded like a door slamming. I have three older siblings though and someone's usually up watching TV or running to the bathroom so I didn't think anything of it. The cat finally stalked up to the room but instead of curling up in my armpit like usual he sat at the bottom of my bed staring at the door. I fell asleep until morning when some commotion woke me up and I walked down to the kitchen to find my parents on the phone with the police. They got up as usual to get ready for work and while making coffee my mom went to grab her rings from the little jewelry dish she had by the sink. She would take them off in the evenings to rinse dishes off and load the dishwasher but the dish was empty this morning. It's a small town so the sheriff sends a deputy over and when my dad walks out to meet them he sees the ATV is missing from out back and the keys off the key ring. My brothers are all up at this point too and were all freaked out that while we were sleeping some robber came in and removed the ATV key and saw an opportunity to take my mom's rings. The police asked if we had any clue when it happened and my parents said no. My mom asked my middle brother who was a freshman in college and home for the summer what time he ended up off the couch last night and if he heard anything. He said he went to bed at 10 or 11 and asked what she meant as his bedroom was in the basement and he wouldn't have heard anything in the kitchen. 
She responded that he was in the living room by the kitchen last night when she went to feed the cat and shut the door that he had left open and that she told him not to sleep on the couch and to go to his bed instead. He told mom that he was in the basement since dinner and never went out or came upstairs again and that he watched a movie in the basement before going to bed. She went white with the realization that the cat must have been trying to warn us that someone came into the house and that the robber dove onto the couch and covered up to hide when she came to the kitchen and exited after she went back to bed. The cops said that for someone to be so brazen, they probably knew our family and our habits but didn't count on the cat being so overprotective and that they had probably intended to steal more but were afraid the cat might wake the whole house. It's been over 20 years since this happened and the robber was never caught but it's still unnerving to think it was probably someone who had been in our home before as a friend. This happened about 15 years ago. I was 21 years old at the time and living in my very first apartment. It was a small studio apartment in a sketchy area. I grew up in a town that was known to be rough and tough, so I knew how to handle myself and learned at a young age to keep my head down and not go looking for trouble. My apartment building was behind a bar. A lot of the bar's customers would stand outside to smoke and when they did, they would be looking at my apartment. Most of the people who were out smoking kept to themselves. A few would nod and say hello as I passed by. There were never any issues until one evening. One evening I came home from work. I passed the bar and saw this extremely tall man outside smoking. As I passed, he just stared at me. I gave him a slight nod, but he didn't acknowledge me. He just continued to stare. It made me uncomfortable, but I didn't think much of it. About an hour later, I hear a knock on my door. That was odd to me because you have to buzz people into the building. The building only had eight units and I didn't really know any of the neighbors. I froze because I didn't want to talk to anyone, but the knocking continued. I finally shouted, who is it? But there was no response. I shouted again, who's there? And a voice said, Tom. I didn't know anyone named Tom, so I told the person at the door they must have the wrong apartment. The voice then said, you may not know me, but I know you. Open up so we can talk. I went over to the people and it was the tall man from the bar. I loudly said, leave or I'm calling the cops. And I heard his footsteps walk away, then heard the building door open and close. He was gone, or so I thought. A few minutes later, I peeked out the window and he was standing in the parking lot. He seemed to be talking to himself. At this point, I was freaking out. I called my landlord who lived in the building next to me. He told me to call the police and that in the meantime, he and his brother would come check things out. I called the police and told them what was going on. They said a car was on the way. Meanwhile, my landlord and his brother made their way to the parking lot. I watched out my window and saw them approach the tall man. He took one look at them and bolted. My landlord and his brother tried to chase him, but he got away. About five minutes later, the police arrived. I gave my version of events and also a description of the man. The officer stared at me and said, we've had reports of a man matching that description who's been sexually assaulting women recently. Thank God you didn't open the door. A few days later, I got a call from the officer. He told me part of the investigation was talking to the owner of the bar. The owner called the police when the tall man reappeared after a few days and the police responded and arrested him. So, tall creepy man from the bar, it was a close call and I sincerely hope I never see you again. I used to work the night shift when I first started here in the prison. I always signed up for the rover job, but I never got it. The rover is a guard who sits in the guard shack and makes rounds twice a shift to check every door and gate to make sure they're locked and checks the perimeter fences to make sure they haven't been tampered with. One night, I finally got what I thought was going to be the easiest shift I ever had. I got to be the rover. During the shift, my first trip around the perimeter went just fine. Everything was as it should be. However, my second go around was a little different. I was patrolling the tunnel access points and checking the gates and doors as I had done earlier that day. In the tunnel, there are three books that the rover must sign to prove they had made their appointed rounds. I had already signed books A and B and just had book C to go. Book C could be found down a long and dark corridor. Picture a long hallway with one bare bulb lighting up a bit of the path every 20 or 30 feet. I entered the hallway and closed and locked the gate behind me. As I started to walk towards the book at the end of the hall, I heard footsteps behind me. I hurried through the first patch of light and looked behind me. No one there. When I stopped, so did the accompanying footsteps, so I wrote it off as an echo. I continued on, and as soon as I exited the patch of light, the footsteps returned, this time a little faster, almost as if they were trying to catch up with me. Once again, in the next patch of light I stopped and looked for my pursuer, and again I saw nothing as the steps ceased. I turned and looked towards book C. There were only two patches of light between us. It was actually in the third patch all by itself, like a beacon of safety. By this point, I was starting to get a little nervous, so I pulled out my flashlight and shined it around. My light illuminated nothing but the damp walls of this part of the tunnel, so I kept walking. As soon as I left that patch of light, I heard those steps again, only this time it sounded like they were jogging towards me. I quickly spun around and shined my light towards the sound. Once again, nothing. 
I decided now wasn't the time to mess around, so I ran to the last light in the book so I could get the hell out of that tunnel. As I reached the book, I could hear the steps sprinting towards me. I quickly signed my name in the book, and as I wrote down the time, I heard a heavy sigh behind me. Then, right in my ear, a husky voice whispered my name. I slowly turned my head towards the sigh. Still seeing nothing, I sprinted out of there, stopping only long enough to lock the doors behind me. I still get goosebumps thinking about it. I can still feel the breath on my ear from when it whispered my name. I put in a shift change right away and never signed up for rover duty again. For context, I was 26 at the time and I'm a lady. It was around 11 p.m. on a Saturday and I needed gas, so I pulled into a normally busy gas station to fill my tank. Strangely, it was completely empty, not a car in sight. I also live in Alaska and it was very cold that night, maybe about minus 10 degrees. Tired after work and just wanting to get home, I usually start my pump and sit in my car due to the freezing cold, but this time I had a weird feeling that I needed to stand by the pump, so I did. I had just started pumping my gas when a little golden sedan pulled up right next to me. I got out and felt hypervigilant for some reason. He started cleaning his spotless windows and as he put back the squeegee he walked towards me. I felt like I wanted to run but I stayed calm and continued pumping. He asked me if I would help him put the windshield wiper fluid in his car because he ran out and didn't know how to open the hood. I laughed it off and told him I didn't know either which was a lie. He kept getting closer and closer to me while trying to lure me into his car saying there was something under his seat he couldn't reach because he was too big. Now I'm 5'2 and small, and this man was large and scruffy. Think Alaska Wilderness type of guy. At this point I'm freaking out and I hit the call button on the pump. He took a step back and started to get back into his car. I thought I was being smart. My gas was almost done when I looked in his car and noticed the insides of the doors had no handles except for the driver door, which freaked me out. I was putting my pump back and opening my door when he appeared right behind me, slammed my door shut, and yelled, you're coming with me. Obviously, I refused. I was too scared to move. He grabbed my arm and slammed me against my car and I elbowed him as hard as I could and I started to scream at the top of my lungs. Thank God for the gas station attendant with the big gun that night because if not for him, I don't know what would have happened. The attendant pulled the video and we made a police report. I called immediately after he took off, but I never heard anything else about it. I just hope he didn't catch some other girl alone. Hi, I hope you enjoyed the video today. If you did, please leave a like and comment and don't forget to subscribe as much more content is coming soon. I've got great videos planned including stories I write, true crimes, and more. If you'd like to suggest a topic or story, real or fictional, be sure to email me at my email address in the description. I accept stories and ideas from yourself and the internet and I can credit you however you like or leave you anonymous if you prefer. Don't worry about grammar either because I'll fix all of that before I read it. Make sure to share the video to all your friends and family and drop your thoughts on the stories below. Which one was the scariest to you? Make sure you follow me on TikTok and Reddit too. If you're looking to collaborate, message me there or here on YouTube or email me. Until next time, thanks.